This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. He was on the fast track with the Florida Highway Patrol, made the jump into politics, a move that led to the United States Congress. Now he wants to be Florida's next United States Senator. Congressman Kendrick Meek on this edition of Conversations. I'm Jeff Weeks. Thank you so very much for joining us. We welcome to our program Congressman Kendrick Meek. Thank you so very much for joining us. Oh, thank you. I'm excited about being on the program, Jeff. You're doing something a little bit unique, I think is worth mentioning, for running for an office of, of this scale in that you're not doing what I guess most politicians at this level do, which is just pay the, pay the money and, and get into the race. You're actually building yours by petition. What's that That's all correct. about? Well, it's very important and many local um, 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 candidates mm -hmm. uh, that are running either for a city council or county commission, even state legislature qualified by petition to be able to get out and reach um, the individuals in that community. Uh, it's almost like asking permission to be mm -hmm. placed on the ballot. It's a lot easier and, and actually it's, it's, it's a lot cheaper to just uh, pay the $10,000 in Tallahassee to qualify for the United States Senate. It's never been done before in the history of the state. So it really entails individuals signing their name to a petition and putting their um, full name and address and all and saying that I would like to see this person placed on the ballot for the office of United States Senate and that's what we're doing. Uh, many people are going on KendrickMeek.com and downloading the petition uh, and they're mailing it in. Um, we're going to a lot of parades, uh, we're going to a lot of events, um, we're even going door to door in some instances, reaching voters throughout the state of Florida. I thought it would be an outstanding opportunity for me to interface with Floridians, especially now during this uh, very tough time for the state of Florida, um, that I, I understand their needs and they understand the kind of representation that I would like to provide. So it's really a grassroots effort. And, and as you're out there meeting with people right now, what's the biggest concern of most folks right now? Right now people are concerned about jobs. Um, they're concerned about the stability not only of the state but also their community. Uh, when you have the number of foreclosures that we have throughout this state, um, it's dealing with home values of individuals who are not in financial straits right now. And I think that it's important um, the next United States Senator uh, understands those issues from top to bottom. I believe with the perspective that I bring to this office, uh, the work that I've done, the line of service in my entire adult life will allow me to bring a perspective to the United States Senate that's not there that will hopefully give Floridians an unfair advantage um, of having that kind of representative in the Senate. Speaking of foreclosures and unemployment, how do we start to curb some of that? Mm, very important question. It's, it's really um, not just a snapshot of today, it's a snapshot of the future. And that's very difficult to see because, uh, you know, if, if we knew what the future hold, I'm pretty sure there'll be a lot of uh, individuals in the investment world that would <laughs> um, be better off and a lot of small businesses that know um, the business to go into or the direction to head in with their business um, will be successful. But we have to create opportunities, more opportunities here in the state. Tourism is our number one industry, is something that we've been protected for a number of years. Um, something that will continue to give to Florida. It's the reason why people come here from Alabama, Mississippi, um, and, and even as far as, as Georgia um, and other parts of the world. I feel that this new energy initiatives that uh, the federal government has invested in, unlike it, it has in the history of the republic, of creating jobs that will allow individuals that graduated with a GED or a certificate of completion to that individual that educated him or herself to become an engineer mm -hmm. in a postgraduate sense. And to create those kind of opportunities will allow Florida to, I believe, have more than 85,000 jobs, additional jobs, that will then spin off opportunities for small business. We also look at the potential that we have here. We have such a <coughs> great military footprint in this state. I mean, we have over 20 military installations uh, here in this state, including private contractors. And in this neck of the woods, you have to look at how can you harness that talent and keep it here in Florida so that we can continue to build on the kind of communities that we appreciate. Um, those that, uh, a number of veterans 
um, still have a lot to offer the country and we want to provide that opportunity to them. So energy is important. Um, building on tourism, um, building on transportation. Uh, I-10 is going to be uh, very, very important. It's an artery, um, especially from Jacksonville all the way over here to Pensacola and beyond mm -hmm. um, for, for job creation and job production. And I'm excited about it. I'm spending a lot of time here in Northwest Florida. This is my fourth time here as a Senate candidate. Um, some <laughs> folks say that that's unheard of for any statewide office uh, seeker mm -hmm. um, to come to Escambia County so many times, Santa Rosa County, uh, Okaloosa County. I think it's very important because this is truly uh, my um, example of the kind of senator that I will be. It won't be just one of these things that I show up um, a year before the election once and a couple of times before the election, during the, uh, before uh, in the election year. As a senator, if I'm going to be the senator for the state of Florida, which I believe I will through the hard work that we're putting in, I want individuals to know that I will be a senator they will see, you know, at the local diner, um, that they will know that it's a 67 county approach. With me being from Miami-Dade County, I think that I would be truly indebted um, to Northwest Florida for every opportunity each voter gave me to represent him or her. Speaking of energy, where do you stand on the offshore drilling in the state mm -hmm. of Florida? I can tell you that it's a mix, mix, mixed emotions as it relates to offshore drilling. We have a number of members of the legislature um, that are pro and, uh, pro and con to um, offshore drilling. I spoke of tourism, and I think it's very, very important. I also spoke of our military assets, and right here in Pensacola, um, the Naval Station here uh, is one of the four uh, deep water and air station ports that uh, we have in the United States of America. Two of them are in Florida. We have Mayport and we have Pensacola. And I think it's important that we um, continue to keep ourselves eligible um, for every military opportunity um, school recertification opportunities, training um, to this state because we have a lot of individuals that have been piped into the private sector, even into our public sector, and educating our children because we have that doormat out. We also have a number of chamber of, chambers of commerce um, that are against um, offshore or oil drilling because it's the reason why they have an unfair advantage on tourism competing against states like Alabama, Mississippi, and Texas. Mm -hmm. And so we have to take all of that into account. And then we also have to look at the science of um, oil off the coast of Florida. Uh, we have a, a number of studies that go back and forth, but we do know that it'll be some 10 plus years before we really see any job creation or energy independence out of drilling off the coast. Uh, we have you know, drilling now in the Gulf. Uh, we have um, a number of um, um, other opportunities in other states that uh, the oil companies have leases um, and they should execute those leases. The legislation is in Tallahassee now. Um, I totally disagree with. Um, I believe there are a number of state senators in the Senate in this uh, particular area that are against it. And so I think that we should move forward on not only um, solar power, mm -hmm. we should move forward on wind power, we should also move forward on um, a number of biofuel opportunities. I have legislation filed now in Congress in dealing with that issue. And since I have an appreciation for it, I think it would be very important for every Floridian to know um, doing things um, the same way we've been doing it um, is not going to necessarily help us move off the mark. Off offshore oil drilling has been a discussion for the last 10, 15 years, just a discussion. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's important that we understand the significance of moving forward and being able to create jobs that, you know, if you have a cousin or a second or third cousin that, you know, he or she decided, you know, not to go to the community college or not to go on to a four-year institution, but wanted to just, you know, get a job and provide for his or her family, they should have opportunities in this new energy initiatives that have been, you know, put forth not only in the state but in the country and Florida will be the first casualty of inaction. And I think it's important that we embrace it, um, that we kind of move away from the issues of saying, well, you know, we shouldn't do uh, things differently than we've done, in, done them in the past and creating fear around those opportunities. We should move forward and we should be able to provide um, a number of opportunities, even for our young people um, and our students that are in school now. Um, Jeff, I'm sorry to go a little long no. on this, but our students I mean, that are in the K through 12 experience, they can benefit from mm -hmm. this. 
and we have you know countries like China that have invested more than the United States as it relates to new energy alternatives a number of Chinese companies are moving in that direction they understand that it's about energy um, especially uh, when you look at national security and you look at future um, economic opportunities. I think it would be safe to say that pretty much everybody in this country would like to lessen our dependence on, on oil, yes, sir. Per, per se. But it seems like when the price of oil goes down, we sort of lose our resolve for it. How mm -hmm. do we bring together the country to push through to get less dependent on Excellent oil? Excellent question. We have to be consistent. We have to do common things uncommonly well. We have to have a resolve beyond any other um, country on the face of the earth as it relates to energy. You have small um, countries that are investing. That's a number one investment. Mm -hmm. How can they be energy independent? Uh, we do have some questions. And I get a lot of questions from many of the military families, um, the husbands, the wives, um, the grandchildren. Um, um, the nieces and nephews that are concerned about their loved ones that are in harm's way. Right. And a lot of folks feel that uh, even though a majority of our men and women um, need to be um, sailor, marines, soldiers, airmen, um, are you know, of, of age where they graduated from high school and went right, in, right into our voluntary force. But we also have a lot of reservists and we also have a lot, not, lot of National Guards, Guard uh, individuals that are in their 30s and 40s and 50s and they're, they're missing high school graduations, they're missing uh, weddings, I mean they're missing birth of a son or a granddaughter. And I think that it's important when we look at independ independence, independence and we look at our security um, it's not about deployments. It's about um, uh, it's about making us energy independent, so we don't find ourselves in these situations, especially like Iraq and other theaters that we're in, um, when we have small units going in to um, either help an al allied country because of our connection to them as it relates to energy. We have to look at it in a new way. Petroleum is good, but it is not necessarily the future as it relates to energy independence, job creation, um, or opportunity for our very young um, leaders that are in school right now that are going to be the leaders um, of the future. Speaking of what's going on around the world from a geopolitical mm -hmm. standpoint, um, Iran, mm -hmm. uh, very touchy situation right now. Uh, possibility of them getting nuclear weapons. How do we deal with that? That's a very, uh, another good question, Jeff. I mean, you're, you're, you're batting pretty good here today. <laughs> Iran has always been an issue uh, for the United States and um, the politics, especially on the presidential level and the unrest that they've had um, of the Iranian people um, against the government being very heavy handed uh, is something that we should pay very close attention to. Israel um, feeling uh, that Iran is a major threat to its security uh, and also Israel being one of the closest friends of the United States in the Middle East for a very long time now um, brings about a very uh, interesting situation for our country. Uh, we do not want an allied country to find themselves under the threat of nuclear uh, attack um, by a country like Iran. Uh, I agree with uh, the president in saying that we should have uh, low-level talks with Iran to make sure that they know um, that we will not tolerate any action, any further action by Iran as it relates to um, nuclear weapons. I'm one of 12 members, of actually a local congressman here, Jeff Miller, right. and I serve on um, the NATO Parliamentary Committee, and this is something that has been discussion, uh, been in discussion with NATO countries. Uh, we have also promoted um, an, an, a coalition of countries uh, in Afghanistan to join our men and women there in the effort against terrorism. I feel that Iran has really played a major role in the loss of life and a number of our troops in Iraq in providing um, IED technology um, to the insurgents. Uh, and will continue to play a role um, towards Western countries and also those countries that practice democracy. So we could very well find ourselves um, um, looking at state-sponsored terrorism, something we have to continue to monitor. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been paying attention to it because since I've been in Congress for seven years, six of those years were on the Armed Services Committee, and four of those years were on the Homeland Security Select Committee and Full Committee and we're continuing to pay, pay attention to it. And I know that Senator Nelson, who serves on the Intelligence Committee, 
is paying attention to it. So Iran is really, uh, you really can't crystal ball in the direction that they're going to head in. But they are trying to um, get influence within our hemisphere as it relates to um, Venezuela. Um, as you know, it's been a very public relationship between mm -hmm. the two countries. Uh, we know that the Venezuelan president has really um, uh, promoted his objections to the United States of America and has bolstered his, um, his support um, amongst the, uh, some hemis hemispheric leaders um, um, of Iran. So it's something that we have to keep our eye on. And I would much rather see diplomatic sanctions um, on Iran versus the threat of military action. But if need be, um, that will be taken too. Let's switch over to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. The president recently said that he's going to boost uh, the amount of troops going into Afghanistan. Uh, your thoughts on that? I think that the president's approach and his security team approach is the appropriate one to take. Um, I think also that um, um, the president and his security team, along with um, General Jones, who um, has had uh, quite a bit of experience um, in dealing with this issue of Afghanistan. And I'm glad to see that Secretary Gates has decided to stay on um, at the Department of Defense, at least to the end of this year, um, to have some sort of continuity of command and also experience of what's happening in Afghanistan. I've been to Afghanistan. I, can, I know, especially during this time of the year, how difficult it is for our men and women to be able to be on the hunt for Osama bin Laden and be able to fight the Taliban, Taliban because of the whole um, landscape um, there and the, the temperatures right. um, that are there. I mean, we've experienced a cold snap um, here in Florida over the last couple of weeks, and I think that it's important um, that we look at uh, um, continuing to go after the, those individuals that are going after us. As you know, um, the, uh, the, the, um, the Christmas Day attack, mm -hmm. uh, possible attack onto right. the country, um, our intelligence agencies were not able to communicate in a way that they should. Uh, I'm glad that the president took full responsibility for what took place mm -hmm. and said that we know that human error played a role, but the buck stops with him. Right. And I think that's important for the country. I think that's important for other countries that are paying attention to what we're doing because we know even in a household, when there's a problem, someone has to take responsibility mm -hmm. for us to have recovery. And leadership is key right now. And um, it's important that everyone knows that we're approaching, um, you know, 10 years and beyond in Afghanistan. And having a multinational multinational force there is very, very important to us. So I'm looking forward to um, um, continuing to monitor the Afghanistan situation as we continue to move on in our efforts and keeping our coalition together. There are some out there who are going to say the Obama administration is not going to be, quote, unquote, as tough on terrorism as maybe the Bush administration was, mm -hmm. and that they are allowing more rights for terrorists and whatnot. Do you, uh, first of all, do you agree or disagree with that? And, and what do they need to do in order to give the impression that they are tougher on terrorism? Well, I think that um, individuals who thought that there would be a paradigm shift as it relates to the approach to terrorism um, would take place when the president took his hand off of the Lincoln Bible and said that he would uphold, uphold the Constitution of the United States as president. Um, uh, the president has carried out airstrikes against al-Qaeda um, strongholds in Afghanistan. Um, the president has also um, put forth um, a number of uh, military advisors from the Bush administration um, 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 and put them in positions um, in his administration to make sure that we have a, a smooth transition of power. Um, people talk about um, Gitmo. Well, mm -hmm. the Bush administration uh, repatriated a number of uh, individuals that were um, quote unquote uh, uh, fighting against, in the fight against U.S. troops in Afghanistan. And that has been a practice that has been going on. Um, Gitmo has been a, um, a, a magnet and a recruiting tool uh, for more terrorists. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, a lot of individuals that are caught, especially of our U.S. military personnel, journalists, what have you, 
um, they end up um, dying in, in orange jump suits um, to represent that this is uh, we're fighting against this whole Gitmo experience. I've been there. Um, I actually um, traveled to Gitmo with Representative Gingry. Um, I know that of Georgia, mm -hmm. and I think that it's important um, that we understand in this effort against terrorism, it's going to be ongoing. It's not going to stop. Um, it's something that we have to protect ourselves against. It's something that we have to make sure that those individuals that are radic radicals as it relates to hijacking religion and carrying out their will um, on behalf of um, people that live here in the United States and other democracies, that we pay very close attention to it. Um, I don't feel that the president is being weak at all as it relates to terrorism, but it is something that we have to continue to deal with. It's almost like um, policing a community. Um, yeah. You have to make sure that if there's a problem, you've got to get down on it. Some problems you'll be able to prevent, but nine times out of ten, um, if people keep throwing rocks at a building, eventually um, they're going to break glass. And unfortunately, um, the, um, the, the Christmas Day attack, uh, almost attack that took place that ended up uh, malfunctioning, um, did not. But it was a wake-up call, not only for this country, but all of us um, that are, as Americans, to reevaluate how we think about terrorism, how do we play a role in helping prevent it, because we do have privacy in this country that we do celebrate, mm -hmm. and something that we have to have uh, a, a, a real discussion on, on, on where security starts and privacy um, ends yeah, or starts. Right, right, right. Let's switch over to health care here because yes, we're getting a little short on time, and I know we can, a lot of these topics we could do a whole show on. But um, there's obviously a bill right now in Congress that would basically, you know, completely overturn the health care system, so to speak, in, in this country. Your thoughts on that right now? Well, health care reform is important. Uh, we have 3,600 Floridians that are losing their health care every week. Um, it's something that is going to continue to grow. Uh, we have to get a system where families are no longer denied of health care insurance um, because they have a pre-existing condition. I think this means more to women than anything mm -hmm. else uh, because we know with breast cancer and another, uh, a no number of other um, cancers and ailments um, that uh, um, plague all of us um, that we need a law on our side that will stop insurance companies from doing what they're doing. Also making sure that Floridians don't find themselves bankrupt. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have a family member that um, find themselves a victim of, 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 of one of these um, uh, cancers or diseases or accident or what have you, and then their insurance company drops them, and then you have to put your house up for you know, a mortgage, and then you lose your house, and you end up going bankrupt. We have to make sure that that doesn't happen. We have to make sure that Medicare is here for years to come, and I'm excited about the fact that uh, we have made, we have expanded in the House and Senate bill of uh, the trust fund as it relates to Medicare. Uh, we have to be a healthier country, and I'm glad that we have come together to try to deal with this issue. Uh, whatever pass in the coming weeks will be um, uh, the first step of many, uh, but um, doing nothing at all is not an option. The big pushback on it comes, mm. it's going to cost a lot of money, and here we are already with a huge national debt for various reasons, and, and of course some of that was brought on by the Bush administration, some of it's been brought on by the mm. Obama administration. How do we deal with this big debt we have right now? Very interesting that you would ask that. Actually, the, both bills that have been put forth are paid for for the next 10 years, unlike um, the Medicare prescription, I mean, I mean, Part D, which right. was a prescription drug program. Well, the, I, I voted against that, and not because I didn't think seniors should have prescription drugs. It's the fact that it wasn't paid for. Um, I voted just a couple of weeks ago of raising the debt ceiling mm -hmm. because I felt that we should look at our spending and what we're doing and our investments. But I can tell you the investments that have been made um, since um, President Obama has been in office are investments that have been domestic um, that have been infrastructure, that have been um, really looking at how we can create jobs in the future. Um, the stimulus package was about saving jobs and creating jobs. And when you look at the teachers that have been laid off, and in this county and the surrounding counties, there were teachers laid off, but it would have been a lot worse if it wasn't for that investment in the United States of America versus no big contracts, uh, very little transparency um, that uh, the last administration. So I'm not one to talk about administrations, but I am one to make sure that we don't continue to get more and more indebted to China uh, because they're buying our debt at a record rate. 
but it's important. I think it's very important that everyone understands that this health care proposal is one that is paid for and not put on the backs of some way, say, future generations, but now generations. Yeah. The president says he hopes it to be budget neutral, and I'm getting a little short on time. Of course, the other side says, well, it's going to come away from, from Medicare. I mean, they're going to be cut somewhere else, or so we're moving it around from pot to pot. Do you concur? Whenever you have um, overall reform, uh, you're going to have cuts in areas to be able to promote areas where you need to be able to focus on. Now, I can tell you, um, the insurance companies and lobbyists in Washington have had their day. That day is over now. It's time for the people to have an opportunity to have rights and to be able to have services and opportunity, especially when their taxpayer dollars are involved. So I'm a, I, I, I know that in this health care reform bill, there will be components of it that I'll disagree with. Right. But for the greater good, I think it's important that individual families have the opportunity um, to have the kind of health care that they deserve. It may not be everything, but it will be better than what they have right now. Congressman, I'm sorry to put you on the spot no like this, but I've got about two minutes left, and I know education is a big deal mm -hmm. to you. I know you've been very involved in the state of Florida. In about one minute, sum up your thoughts on education. Education is the key to this state and to this country, and if we're going to compete against other countries, uh, we're going to have to have the best educated and, bright and brightest. Um, the race to the top opportunities that are in the Department of Education and looking at a different way of not only educating our children, but providing opportunities for those that have gone through the K-12 through experience so they compete with other workers in this global economy. And I am um, all appreciative to education. If it wasn't for what I got in the K through 12 experience, if it wasn't for what Florida A&M provided me, um, and and being a state trooper in this state for five years, and now being in the legislature, I got that start with education. My mother's an educator, and uh, I'm going to be talking a lot about that during this campaign. Very good. One quick question here, just to get you in about 30 seconds. Do you think corporate America needs to be more involved with education? Absolutely. Um, the first bill that I filed when I was a state representative was the charter school bill. And now it's becoming more of an economic development tool to where that companies that want to relocate to Florida may very well for their employees create a charter school and surrounding communities to participate in it. I think that's the future. I think it will provide an opportunity of a quality education in this country. And, and, and in this state. Congressman Kendrick Meek, we wish you the best of luck. In Thank you so very much. Thank Senate. you. Thank he you. He is uh, considered by most to be the, uh, the front runner on the Democratic side. So uh, wish him the best of luck and we appreciate him spending some time with us. And we greatly appreciate you watching this edition of Conversations with Jeff Weeks. Take very good care of yourself. We'll see you soon. And oh, by the way, we're on Facebook and on the web at wsre.org slash conversations. Take good care. Thanks a lot. Very good. Thank you.